died for our sins, that we might be cleansed and found ready to enter the glorious kingdom. And now we pray that as we have gathered here the capacity of young people, that in each young heart and those of us who are not so young will be tuned in to hear thy word and to learn more of thee, to know what is thy will toward us. Bless us and keep us and bless such like gatherings throughout the white harvest field. Abide with us and bless those who participate. Give them wisdom and power from above, that they may speak the words that will be of encouragement, the words that will bring honor and glory to their holy name. Forgive us our sins and shortcomings, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 So once again, good afternoon, everyone. So today we'll be talking about something that we've all heard before. So we've all read, um, I read in the key verses, the start of the story of the talents. So before we actually get into this topic, I'd like to call forward the children and they have a program for us.
but God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. John 3 verse 16. John 3, 14 to 19, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believe in him shall not praise but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his own beloved Son, that whosoever believe in him shall not praise but have eternal life. For God so not the Son of the Spirit to condemn the world, that the world through him might be saved. He that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes on him is condemned already, because he has not believed in him who has become the Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men will not darkness better than light, because they enjoy evil. John 3, 14 to 19. Amen. 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 Seek ye first of the King of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6 33. Amen. 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 Or had your own number. Amen. Love, Lord, to God, your God, with all your heart, with all with all your mind, and with all your soul. Matthew. The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. Gives us talents when we are old, old, older as well. 
Our talents are God's, but we can bring to God nothing that is all, not already His. All things are God's, but not only not only by creation, but by redemption. Just like everything else we own, all of our talents belong to God. He has given us talents and has made it possible for us to acquire more in order that we may be able to help ourselves and others onward in the way to life. Danger of self exaltation. This also means that we need to be humble and remember where our talents come from. While due respect should be given to those whom God has entrusted with more than ordinary talents, that man thus endowed needs to walk more humbly and closely with God as he advances. The people of God should realize the fact that God has not given them talents for the purpose of enriching themselves with earthly goods, but in order that they may lay up in store and good foundation against the time to come, even for eternal life. Everybody has a talent. The Lord has a place for everyone in His great plan. Talents are not needed or not bestowed. Supposing that the talent is small, God has a place for it, and that one talent, if faithful use, will do the very work God decides that it should do. All both high and low, rich and poor, have been trusted by the Master with talents, some more and some less according to their several ability. In summary, we are either born with our talents or we acquire them. Our talents belong to God. He is using them through us. Everybody has at least one talent that God has given. Thank you so much, Jenny. It's really important for us to know where our talents come from and why we have them so that we can use them to the best of our abilities and use them for God's glory. So our next item today is Emmy, and she's going to be playing a song for us on the piano. So I'm sure we're all aware of the, the story of the talents or the parable of the talents, but just just in case we forgot parts of it, I'm going to read it really quick. That's okay. <clears throat> For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his sev to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth, and did his lord's and hid his lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh, and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came, and brought the other five talents, saying, Lord, thou did deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over, the, over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also, he also 
that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. And enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee, <clears throat> I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast sown, where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast, there thou hast that is, that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sow not, and gathered where I not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have a, a abundance, but from him that he that hath not shall be taken away, even that which he hath. The ruler's possessions were entrusted to him that he might prove himself a faithful steward. He was to dispense these goods for a blessing of those in need. So God now entrusts men with means and talents and opportunities that they may be agents in helping the poor and suffering. He who uses his entrusted gifts as God designs becomes a co-worker with the salvation. He wins souls to Christ because he is the representative of his character. None should mourn that they have not, not, have not larger talents. When they use to the glory of God the talents he has given them, they will improve. It is no time for it is no time now to bemoan our position in life and excuse our neglect to improve our abilities, because we have not another's ability and position saying, Oh, if I had his gift and ability, I might invest a larger capital for my master. If such you if such persons use their one time wisely and well, this is all that the Master requires of them. In Patriarchs, or in Christ's Object Lessons, page 329-330, it reads, The question that most concerns us should not be, How much have I received? But, What am, am I doing that with that which I have? The development of all our powers is the first duty we owe God and our fellow men. No one is to is to go is not no one who is not going growing daily in capability and usefulness is fulfilling the purpose of life. <clears throat> in making a profession of faith in Christ, we pledge ourselves to become all that is it is it is possible for us. In making a profession of faith in Christ, we pledge ourselves to become all that is, sorry, that is possible for us to become as much. And we should cultivate every faculty to the highest degree of perfection that we may do the greatest amount of good of which we are capable. When the Lord takes account of his servants, the, re, the, servants, the return from every talent will be scrutinized. The work done reveals the character of the worker. <clears throat> Those who have received the five and the two talents return to the Lord the entrusted gifts with their increase. In doing so, in doing this, they claim no merit for themselves. Their talents are those that have been delivered to them. They have gained other talents, but there could have been no gain without the deposit. They see that they have done only their duty. The capital was the Lord's. The improvement is his. Had not the Savior bestowed upon them his love and grace, 
they would have not been they would have been bankrupt for eternity. But when the master receives the talents, he approves and rewards the workers as though the merit were all their own. His countenance is full of joy and satisfaction. He is filled with delight that he can bestow blessings upon them. For every service and every sacrifice, he requites them. Not because it is a debt he owes, but because <clears throat> that because his heart is overflowing with love and tenderness. Our Heavenly Father requires no more nor less than he gives us ability to do. He lays upon us his servants, no burden that they are not able to bear. He knoweth our frame, he remembereth <clears throat> that we are dust. All that he claims from us we through divine grace can render. The example of the followers of Christ at Antioch should be an inspiration to every believer living in the great cities of the world today. While it is in the order of God that chosen workers of consecration and talent should be stationed in important centers of population to lead out in public efforts, it is also his purpose that the church members living in the cities should use their God-given talents in working for souls. These are the riches, these are the rich blessings in store for those who surrender fully to the call of God. May we all use our talents for the betterment of God, so that they may not be used in so that they not lacking or that we may increase those talents and make them stronger. <coughs> Thank you, Mikey. We all know this story, but it's so important for us to hear it again and to remember it um, so that it reminds us to use our talents so they don't go to waste, as Mikey said. Um, so our next item will actually be Jenny and myself, and we have a musical item.
privileged to meet some new friends. Um, they are from Waterloo, and I'd like to call them forward to share a new slide with us as well. Mine own with usury. 
Matthew 25, verses 26 and 27. Obviously, the master was not pleased with the servant who buried his talent. God expects us to increase our abilities beyond the original endowment. But how are we to multiply our talents? The same way that the servants received five and two talents, the profitable servants did. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise he that had received two, he also gained other two. Matthew 25, verses 16 and 17. By using our talents, we multiply them. By using the gifts God has given us, we can gain new skills, and any skill or ability improves with practice. For example, anyone who has fingers, a mind, an opportunity can learn to play the piano if he wants to. The more he practices, the more skillful he will become. Our talents increase, both in number and value, as we use the abilities already in our possession. Although we should work to develop our talents for the Lord and use them for the good of others, we cannot justifiably take pride in our abilities, God given or developed, for two reasons. Number one, we would have nothing if God hadn't given us the talents in the first place. And number two, it is through the power of God that we develop and use our talents. Our talents are to be developed and utilized in a humble spirit. May God help us to increase the abilities He has given us to serve our benevolent and loving <coughs> Savior. Thank you. And it's so important for us to keep using our talents so that they don't stay at the same level. We always want to keep improving. And actually, as Brother Doran said in the sermon today, we always want to do the best that we can. Um, so our next item will be Emmy and Sienna, and they have a song for us. one by one, what talent did you get? So, Zachary, what talent do you have? Oh, playing soccer. <laughs> okay. Oh, piano. Okay, okay, music. Sorry, I didn't hear what you were saying. Okay, music. And you said soccer. Okay, that's, uh, that's a different chapter. But yes, it's, it's a talent. If somebody knows to play, it's a talent, right? So uh, somebody is better, somebody is not so good at playing piano or uh, other. <clears throat> so just to uh, wrap it up, you know, this uh, whole subject about talents. Um, how to use our talents together? This is the main thing. <clears throat> because sometimes being in church, you know, 
Somebody's got the talent <coughs> of music. Somebody's got the talent of <coughs> um, explaining prophecy. Somebody has the talent of uh, speaking, speaking in uh, tongues. I mean, foreign languages. Uh, the talent of uh, uh, listening. Do you think that's a talent? Yes. One of the most important, I think. And uh, uh, somehow I feel that uh, I personally, myself, let, let me speak about myself. I, I like that talent because when, uh, when we need to listen, we actually talk sometimes probably too much. So that's a very important talent. <clears throat> so how can we combine <clears throat> that we use all our talents together? See, there is not a greater or a smaller talent. All of them are important. You can't say that whoever has got a talent in music, that's greater than the one who's got a talent in listening or in, uh, uh, in whatever talent. Okay. So, yes, in cooking or in, uh, even in uh, visiting, right? So, it's a talent. In the book of Romans, chapter 12, we read in Romans 12, from verse 4 to 7. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ. And every one member is one of another. Having then gifts, deferring according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the uh, proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching. So teaching is another talent, which is very important as well. Um, also, Apostle Paul writes in the first epistle to Corinthians, uh, also chapter 12, he is comparing with the body. From verse 15, Actually, from verse 14, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12, from verse 14. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? So we can see this correlation that there is one body and how many members? Many members, right? And every member has a specific um, role and a specific work and, uh, and thing to, uh, to do that, the bo that this body might work. Uh, those of you who had broken bones or stuff like that, you know what it means, right? When you can't use your, your arm or you can't use your leg or, you know. Uh, so, never seen people with broken tongues, but <laughs> so, sometimes probably it's, it's useful because we, uh, we do talk too much and, and that's not very healthy. But um, it, it's very important that we understand this and that all of these talents uh, cooperate and they do uplift each other and complete each other at the same time. In the book Daughters of God, page 151, one paragraph says, all have not the same work. There are distinct and individual duties for each to perform, yet with these varied duties there may be a beautiful harmony binding the work of all together in perfect fitness. Our Heavenly Father requires of none to whom he has given but one talent, the improvement of five, but if the one wisely used, the possessor will soon have gained more, and many continually increase her power of influence and sphere of usefulness by making the best use of the talents which God has given her. Her individuality may, individuality may be distinctly preserved, and yet she be part of the great whole in advancing the work of reform so greatly needed. He talks about a particular sister uh, in this uh, context. Um, now, if I ask you, have you ever been envy on someone else's talent? <laughs> That's good. We, we are honest to ourselves. You know, um, 
days ago I, I looked at my daughter and she she started to play piano, not to praise her, but that's a talent. She started to play without any music, any notes, anything. So I'm listening one day and I said, Amy, what are you doing? And she was playing, you know, Jesus loves me. Then she, she, she's got another song and another one. I can sit beside that piano probably hours and hours, but I don't have that talent. You know, I can play on nerves probably, but not something which makes sense and, uh, and which, which is music, which is a song. So I, I'm kind of looking and said, well, I'm kind of envy because she, she picks up at this early age and, uh, and, she, and that's a talent. So we might look at someone who is good at teaching and said, well, I wish I had that talent. But we should, we, should not, um, we should not disappoint ourselves because for each and every one individually, God has entrusted with something. Um, and, and this is critically important. Um, that we would minimize what we would say, well, my talent is not so important. I'm going to uh, hide it somewhere and I'm not, not going to use it. That's one of the biggest mistakes people do. Sometimes people do fall into another mistake. Instead of cooperating, using our talents together, they do say, well, I'm so smart and so talented, so if they don't put me in this position, if they, they don't let me the whatever, you know, uh, uh, I, I don't want to say, but I'm not, uh, you, you will see in what trouble uh, these people will get. That's not true. Look, either you've got a talent of music, of preaching, of explaining the Bible, of tongues, of listening. Uh, you are not the only one. So if you don't want to cooperate and be used by God in the best way, there is going to be someone else. You know, sometimes people say, well, I'm not going to give my tithe. I'm going to organize my own group, home church, whatsoever. So I'm going to show them. Look, God doesn't operate that way. We should not fool ourselves, but let every and each talent individually work to the benefit of community, of our faith, and our God, Lord Jesus Christ. Um, <clears throat> someone has written, I'd like to share this one and one more paragraph, and I'm done. Someone has written that there are four kinds of bones in the world. You know, when you study anatomy, you study different parts of the body, and then you study the skeleton, and then you go from top to the bottom, and you see all of those parts. Now, these four parts are the wish bonds, who spend their time wishing someone else would do the work. That's number one. Number two, the job bonds, who do all the talking, but very little else. Okay? The knuckle bones, who knock everything that anyone else is trying to do. And the final kind of bones, this is the back bones, who shoulder the load and do the work. <laughs> do you agree with this uh, uh, idea which comes from here? You know, some people, they give themselves great and big and knowledgeable and whatnot, and basically they do nothing, just talk. Just talk, blah, 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 focus, focus, and nothing else. And there are people compared with the knuckle which not down everything, you know, they discourage, they go and they are negative always, they say, well, we can't do it, uh, we don't have power, we don't have means, those are the knuckle bones. Now, I wish you young people and everyone that we are the backbones. What the backbone is doing? See, if you have a strong backbone, you can pull it up. You can do the job by God's grace. And this is, this is uh, uh, very important. Uh, as I said, one more paragraph <coughs> from uh, Acts of the Apostles, 279. God has placed in the church as his appointed helpers men of varied talents, that through the combined wisdom of many, the mind of the Spirit may be met. Men who move in accordance with their own strong traits of character, refusing to yoke up with others who ha have had a long experience in the Word of God, will become blinded by self-confidence. Unable to discern between the false and the true. It is not safe for such ones to be chosen as leaders in the church. For they would follow their own judgment and plans regardless of the judgment of their brethren. It is easy for, it is easy for the enemy to work through those who themselves need in counsel at every step. 
undertake the guardianship of souls in their own strength without having learned the lowliness of Christ. And just to say one more thing, unless we learn to cooperate and to uh, work together as using our talents, there is not going to be any prosperity. When we pull up together and use every talent individually, doesn't matter how big or how small, then we will see a result and a progress in God's ministry. May God help us in a humble way that we use our talents and develop those talents which have been hidden for a long time. Amen. Thank you, Brethren. This is another one of those things that we, we know about, but we often we don't remember. We always talk about how we have all these talents and we need to use them, but we always forget that we actually need to use them together. Um, so we'll move on to our next musical item, and I'd like to call for Justin, and he has a song on the clarinet for us. many things that I like is writing. Some 13 years ago, I wrote a story that I would like to share with you today in the form of a song <coughs> that I have titled, I would like to tell the story.
Thank you, Uncle Joe. That was a lovely hit song. Um, at this time, I'd like to call forward all the youth and young people um, to sing our youth song, which is hymn number 649. You can all come forward, please.
to come and worship together. Please help us to um, take what we've learned from this study and help us to use our talents um, in any way that we can, the talents that you have given us, and please help us to further develop these talents. Please forgive us all our sins and be with us in the new week. Please help us to be a light to others and help us to love and serve you. Thank you, Amen. 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 Prayer, we've come to the close of our young people's meeting.